Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. thank you for joining me. Let's try some Master of Orion. So this is a new game that's coming out, it's in early access right now. This is the successor to Master of Orion, um, a fairly famous space-based uh, 4x strategy game. And uh, we're going to give it a go. So I've played a little bit off camera just to try to get my bearings straight, but um, for the most part it's pretty much going to be new. I've only played for about 30-40 minutes just to get the, you know, the interface down a little bit and kind of go from there. So we're going to start a new game and from the cloudy planet let's see what Altair. we have. The proud Alcari are an old race of avian hominids. Although well known for their peaceful disposition, hmm. they are fierce in combat and will rarely back out of a fight if they believe they have just cause. The Skylord rules okay. over the flock on a harsh Ursus system. Hailing from the cloudy planet Altair. <laughs> okay, so the he's not going to stop Alcari talking apparently. Are an old race of um, avian hominids. Let's pick uh, the harsh, the blaze primal in there under the super primal in like their ways. The cold blooded Sakura from the planet Sla seem uncouth and unenlightened to many of the other races. However, their hulking forms and rustic rituals belie an enduring. It's very nice, but we're going to move on. So yeah, we're going to choose the Sakura. Um, we're going to play with, yeah, she'll play with six players, why not? Galaxy type circle, galaxy size medium, um, sounds fine. You just leave, you know, just default settings and we'll go from there. And uh, let's just, just to see what happens. Again, I do think it's, it's fair warning that this game is in early access. So um, anything that you see in this video or the you know, videos that I put out um, after this video are subject to change. The game could change substantially between now and when the game comes out. So just be aware of that. While the sun scorched the harsh surface of Sla, the Sakra brood multiplied in their underground caverns. It was not long before even the largest grottos and the deepest ravines were crowded with their ever-increasing numbers, and food became a precious commodity. With greater numbers of mouths to feed, the brood now pours out from their caves to the stars in search of new dens for its families. My experience with the game so far has been that the the interface is very crisp. It's very Stego, yes. Very clean. This lackey serves the hierarch of the Sakura, yes. His eyes wide open watching, his brain thinking for bits of stuff to know. Inquire away, hierarch. Your lackey helps. Okay. Right, so, um, it's turn-based, space-based. Um 4x type game. Click and drag, move around. Um, we have Sla 2 <laughs> is where our capital is. Be all ears. To move a fleet, left click to select it, and right click to move to a destination. To split a fleet, left click and select the ships that you want to use. So we have two scouts and a frigate. Uh, let's go ahead and grab our scout and we'll go ahead and auto explore. We'll grab this other scout, auto explore. That's what they're for, right? And then we got our frigate. We could explore with this frigate as well. Um, Let's zoom out really far. So here's our galaxy, right? We're here. We know there's six players on the map, including ourselves. So there's going to be someone probably here, 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 and here. Um, but we want to make sure that we kind of colonize as much as we can right at the start. Um, this kind of game, this game sort of reminds me, and again, I, I apologize. I actually never played Master of Orion, the original. But um, some of the features in this game remind me of other space-based 4X games like Endless Space where you've got this um, the system where you can't actually move like in a grid, like say Galactic Civilizations 2, and you just move wherever you want. Instead, you have these these jump points, right? So you move to a warp point, and then the warp point takes you from one system to another. So we'll go ahead and send this frigate. We won't want to keep him. He's our only defensive fleet, you know? So we'll keep him nearby, but we might do some scouting with him, like, you know, just barely outside the solar system. Like, check this one out, maybe check this one out. As long as it's close by our center. Um, and so that's that, really. Now we need to choose our research. Tell these brainers what stew they should be brewing, big boss. <laughs> okay. Choose technology to research. We can work on government, research laboratory, um, government support. So we get a research laboratory and government support. This gives us more morale. I apologize about the size of the font. I tried to make it bigger, but you can't actually make it any bigger. There's no options for that. The options menu is a bit sparse. But again, the graphics are very clean and it looks nice, so perhaps by the time the game comes out in full uh, full access, I guess you could call it, um, they'll have some more interface customization options. This thing just costs us money but gives us more morale. Morale lets us tax our people more, which is good. Um, I bet you could easily make a profit by building that once you get that thing out. 
physics, an automated factory. We have neutron blaster for um, offense, cloning center, population growth minus 25%. Okay, population growth until the planet reaches maximum population. So, the resulting increase in lifespan increases population growth. It says negative 25%. What I think that means is actually it's going to take less food to grow our population. It's, I don't know, kind of confusing to me. Population growth minus 25. In every other game I've played, you want population growth to go up, not down. So, that's a little bit unclear, but... Death spores. <laughs> Genetically engineered, rapidly mutating viruses that relentlessly attack organic life forms. That sounds awesome. And engineering. We can make the destroyer. It's a middling escort vessel with more heavily armed and more resilient than the frigate. Well, I think we want to go with um, either the automated factory or the research laboratory. Uh, let's go for the the research laboratory. For the I think brood. that's going to be better. Now, there's a more expansive tech tree here. Um, you know, it kind of goes left to right, kind of like you know every other game that's ever been made. <laughs> so that's fine. Um, but um, yeah, we don't actually have to worry about looking at it from this this screen. Oh, you big boss! Thanks, game, for letting me know how to end the turn. I appreciate that. So, we are making 50... We have 50 credits. 50 BC, a billion credits, I would assume. We're gaining 24 per turn. We have three command points, which I assume is, like, supply, how many ships we're allowed to have. We have two research per turn. It's going to take six turns until we finish physics. And we've got our actual menus up here. Um, also, keep on F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6. So, that's pretty convenient. You know how I am about keyboard shortcuts. Here's where we can change our tax rate. We are currently earning three credits per pop unit. If we increase it... Hierarch. Be all ears. High taxes have an impact on colony morale. Keep in mind that a striking population does not produce anything. So, we have one dude on strike by having the taxes higher, but we end up making 32 credits instead of 24. So, having these people work is important. So for now, we'll probably not raise it, but... It actually does produce quite a bit extra. And credits can be useful. I, I don't really know exactly what we can buy with them yet, but uh, let's try this. 4 BC, 5 BC gets us 2 on strike. I think we're, I'm actually going to raise it. I think we'll try it out. Let's go check out our colony. Sla, right? So we can move stuff around. We can click and drag these guys. And uh, apparently our planet, Sla, the capital, Sla 2 rather, is a medium-sized planet. Its biome is Terran. It has abundant resources, abundant minerals rather, normal gravity, and it produces gold. Gold gives us bonus credits. We can see here in this tooltip that we are earning 32 credits from population and two from resources. So I'm assuming just because this planet produces gold, we're gonna have two credits per turn automatically. That's what's happening there. And then it seems like you end up having like one research point per person working on this, we get more production, and we get more food. The the dude who's on strike is kind of a jerk. We could, like, scale back our research in order to try to knock out, like, more population growth. We're nine turns away from more growth. But, um, I'm actually thinking it might be a good idea. Cost is 12 research points. What if we just knock that thing out in two turns and just didn't even worry about growth? Let's try this. Let's go back to... Taxes. F1. Let's go down. What if we go down? Do we get anything extra from having low? Doesn't look like we do. So basically, tax them as much as you can without having them go on strike. Okay. Why don't we go ahead and get a little bit less population growth. Negative two foods. So we're losing people if we do that. So we can't go that low. I want to see if we can knock out that, that research a little bit quicker. So in just two turns, if we wanted to really commit heavily to it. Right now we're working on a colony ship. Production is used to build ships and buildings. Production on this planet. Population is providing three, that one dude right there. And, uh... Cost of a colony ship is 93, and yet it's still showing it's going to take one turn. Interesting. So it looks like it's, like, pre-built this colony ship for us. <clears throat> Seems like a good approach to me then. So let's do that. Hastily hierarch, be all ears. Carries one population unit inside. Colony ship has no weapons, so a military escort is recommended. Choosing planets with good biomes to boost population growth and high high mineral richness to increase production. Okay. 
Alright, so... On our planet, we can build another colony ship. We could do a hydroponic farm. Gives us more food, cost maintenance. It'd take quite a long while to build it. Biospheres are going to give us research, though. I think that we want to work on getting, like, basic stuff. Like, having constant research would be nice. Or we could try to build more ships. 93 production for another colony ship. Huh. You know, I don't really know exactly what the right order, of, uh, the right build order is on this. I'm gonna try going big. Let's try to build wide. We'll go for another colony ship. We can queue up more stuff if we want to. Okay, so that's nice that it gave us basically 90 points for free. We'll do, uh... Let's see. Okay, so they took one of our population. Interesting. So yeah, that colony ship took one. We were getting six per turn. Let's do this. We'll take one more turn to knock this guy out. <clears throat> now we have our frigate, which we can't explore with. Let's uh, send him over this fast, yeah? And here's our colony ship. So, um, zooming out, we can see that... You see that little dot right there? A little dot tells you that there's one planet in the system. Over here we've got two planets, but they are not explored yet. Let's say, uh, do this. This will actually have our exploration ships do their moves. Where is our other explorer? Or a scout, apparently, uh... Where are you headed? How come he didn't move? I guess we'll just assume that one of these two is going to be good, and let's just head this way. Physics research is now complete. The brainers are over and done with this new... thing. Okay. Wait a second. Gosh, wait, wait, wait! Look at here, look! Huh. I could have sworn that wasn't the research that we had done. Oh, those brainers was it? Still no, it was. Scary. Let's also yes, do government. Big boss. Okay. So I don't think we want to commit this heavily to research right now, but we did. We did just unlock another another building. Apparently we can't. There we go. Now we have the ability to make the automated factory. So let's scale back now here. Let's slow down our research quite a bit here, but now we're going to try to knock out some automated production. I think that's a good idea. Lomar has been discovered. Okay, so it's a new system. And of course, Lomar has two places that we can, we can colonize. We're working on an automated factory instead of the colony ship. If we want to, we can go in here, and I think we can, uh... Oh, we have to click Show Queue. There we go. Now we can actually queue up a ship if we wanted to. We'll do that. We're gonna build the automated factory, then we'll work on the colony ship. Okay, everyone do their moves. There's our scout ship, working on showing stuff. He's got... I believe that shows that he's got moves, right? And we found a new planet. It's a medium, toxic, poor mineral planet. These are the resources that it would provide. Only barely any production. Minimum or maximum population is only four. So it appears that I may have chosen wrong in my uh, my course heading here. <coughs> this one is a large desert. Ten max population. Okay, we're gonna go here. Next turn, that is. Medium barren with abundant. Okay. Now if we want to, we can spend our credits to just buy this thing and have it in one turn. That seems like a good idea. I don't know what else to use credits for, so let's go ahead and do this. And then I think we can just pull these guys off. Cost is 12. Is this going to complete automatically next turn if I have no one working on it, I wonder? 
Looks like no. Let's work on food for this turn then. Ooh, wow. Huge tundra. 12 max population. Lots of production. 4 and 3. Gravity normal, no specials. What, um, what was here? More gold? None. And artifacts. Research bonus. Excellent. That's a great place to colonize. Okay. Before getting into combat, it is important to consider their strength. So we found some pirates. They have a strength of 21 power, 21 actual strength, and they are heading toward our capitals. So that's what this guy's going to be for. We need to bring him back over here so he can defend. He should beat them over here, I think. Oh yeah, it's a long way. They have to warp a long distance to actually get here, so we'll be well, well and ready. We'll be prepared. Automated factory is complete. Uh, let me hint you. So now we have automatic two production at the cost of one credit. That's cool. Uh, we're working on a colony ship now. Let's see. You can only apparently build one automated factory. So, um... Yep. Hydroponic farm. Or the biosphere. Well, they both provide two points of stuff. And for the same cost. So I think we just want both of them. Let's get the biosphere first. I do think we want to power out this, uh, this colony ship, though. After we get this research done. Actually, are we going to do anything with government? Right away? Probably not. Let's just make it take two turns. Get a little bit more value out of it. Right here. And we'll wait, wait, wait! Look at here, look! And let's go ahead and do our colonization. So we have a colony ship. We can use that to colonize. Cue fancy uh, landing landing animation. Abundant minerals. Good deal. All right, so we have our colony, and this plan is providing us with three research automatically because we've got a building providing one and two resources. So part of it's the artifacts. And part of it is this building. What building? Uh, well, you have to go to manage structures. And then in here, you can kind of like scroll the planet around. And for some reason, colony bases provide one of everything, giving us research for free. But our, uh, our capital planet, its building is different. Um, we've got the marine barracks, an automated factory. We've got star base. And we've got our capital. There it is. The capital provides command points, but it doesn't give anything else. It doesn't give the plus one to everything. So, that's nice, I guess. So, that means that in this planet, we, uh, we're automatically generating three research, which is quite nice. I do not know if research carries over. I, I hope that it does. I don't really know. This planet also has five production right now. Um, we're probably going to want to knock out, like, basic stuff again. Like, whatever we can get out the quickest. Automated factory sounds great. Now this planet has different morale than the capital, I think. We have 80 base morale, and taxes take it down by 20%. This planet has capital in star system plus 30. So we end up with 90 morale versus 60 morale, which is pretty significant. We also have man uh, colony focus, you can kind of just make it be automated. Pretty simplistic, I, th I like it. This planet is, I mean, it's providing us with money, which is nice. Use auto build. I don't really know exactly what it's going to build. Just maybe pick stuff and you don't have to worry about it. But, um, this is going to help out quite a bit right now. We're getting five research per turn. We can go back to our capital and pull some more guys off research here. Just enough so we still knock it out in one turn, but really focus on production now. In fact, again, since we're building a colony ship and we're not going to start building any other buildings, we don't really need this research just yet. I'm not going to build a research laboratory or the government support facility yet, so... By all means, let's try to knock out even more production. That seems good to me. 
And our scout is no longer scouting. I'd love to get these ones scouted out. Um, let's make sure that this guy gets the planet explored. So two planets there. Ultra rich mineral, medium tundra. That sounds good. I think we're going to go that way. Marindi. Three planets in that system. Alright, cool. Pirate fleet detected. Same one as before. No problem. And we've discovered Varek. Varek has only one system. Or one, one planet. We'll manually control this just so we have something to do. And we're still working on just the same stuff as before. Alright, five turns looks like until they get to us. We've got two turns to get our fleet in position. Government research the is completed. Are over and done with this new. <laughs> Alright, next up, I think we do want to just knock out engineering. Keep on getting the cheap stuff. Leaves it to and a threatening fleet has been detected as well. That's this one. Well, it's not very dangerous though. We, we already know that it's coming and we'll be fine, I think. Okay, well we can use this menu here to see a little bit better overview of what's going on. So we'll have our automated factory on the secondary system done soon. Another colony ship in seven turns. And uh, we'll keep going from there. So, why does it not give me the ability to add to this system? Oh, I have to have it selected. Okay. Got it. From here you can just queue up more buildings from the screen. That's pretty handy. Alright, cool. Well, I'm going to take a break here. But um, as always, if you want to show your support, feel free to click the like button. Um, come back for the next video, and I do look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.